So the big opportunity here is the fact that we've got over just over 4,000 new cases of cancer every year from cigarette smoking. So, you know, that's 4,000 cancers every year that, that needn't be here. Lung cancer is a truly hideous disease, but it's also quite largely preventable if seven out of 10 lung cancers are related to smoking. We've got real life proof of the harm of smoking coming into our clinics week after week after week. Today I have seen, in just this afternoon, six patients with lung cancer, all of whom have smoked in the past. The view that I have is that we're looking for a tobacco-free future, not necessarily a nicotine-free future. Everybody has to judge it based on what they think will keep them away from smoking. Cigarettes themselves contain about 6,000 different dangerous chemicals and if we think about that I mean there isn't much that we would put into our body that contains 6,000 chemicals. We've been following the evidence uh, for some time and what's increasingly clear is that uh, vaping is far less harmful than smoking. To switch your smoking fully to using an e-cigarette is a dramatic change in what you're um, doing to your body in terms of harm that you're taking on board. I see it as a major innovation in the tobacco and nicotine field that will ultimately render cigarettes obsolete. I train GPs up and we don't really talk about vaping as an entity in itself. We talk about how we can support our patients in stopping smoking. All the evidence, all the research points to this. It's not a new piece of information. We've known this for a few years and I think we'll look back in the future and think why didn't people switch to vaping sooner? It's supposed to be a substitute for tobacco but I think it's probably as bad as tobacco. People say it's healthier than smoking which it probably is but then no one knows the long-term effects of it. All smoking is harmful to be fair so it will have its side effects yeah. Maybe it's good for health maybe because we're not quite sure about this we never listen about this and we don't have any proof don't know the long-term effects of it, but it seems better than smoking. So I think it's an unproved, an unproved product, really. The first modern vaping device was produced in 2003. Today, the global market is estimated to be worth over 15 billion pounds. Many people think vaping was invented by major tobacco companies, but the innovation came from one man, who was looking for a better way to quit smoking. Chinese pharmacist Hon Lik. After becoming a heavy smoker, Hon Lik decided to kick the habit to avoid the same fate that met his father, who died from smoking-related illness. At the time, quitting methods were limited, and he'd been using high-dosage nicotine patches to help him quit. The realization hit him that nicotine replacement therapy couldn't provide the same nicotine rush and he began his search for an alternative. He set about using traditional Chinese remedies, including ginseng and deer antler pill, before the revelation came to him. Hon had vivid nightmares one night, when he went to sleep forgetting to remove the nicotine patch he'd been wearing on his stomach. He dreamed he was drowning in a giant cloud of vapour, and says the nightmare inspired him to create a nicotine product that produced vaporised liquid instead of smoke. His concept became the idea behind the modern vaping device. It was one that was to prove controversial, sparking health warnings, polarizing opinions, and ultimately creating a culture of mistrust. But what was fueling the fears? Myths and misconceptions come from all sorts of different sources. Well, the first of the myths about vaping that is really, really tragic is that people say it's just as bad for you as smoking. And something like a third of smokers in the UK actually believe that. It's absolutely not the truth. But one myth is that we don't know anything. We don't know anything about them. We don't know what's in them. And that's a really common myth. Now, e-cigarettes are 
possibly one of the most heavily researched um, innovations of our time. Public perceptions are getting more and more out of kilter with the evidence. So people are thinking more and more that e-cigarettes are harmful. Well, there are so many myths about vaping. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Swapping one addiction for another. Nobody knows what's in it. Popcorn lung. Gateway to smoking. Secondhand vaping is very harmful. Youth epidemic. Heart attacks, COPD. The list goes on and on and on. And when you get to the bottom of you excavate the science, you'll find there's nothing there. I've heard the um, experts compare the, the risk of smoking um, cigarettes as being like jumping out the 16th floor of a building compared to using an e-cigarette, which is like you know, jumping off the step at the bottom of the building. So it's not like a zero risk activity, but the, if you had to choose which you were going to do, you'd probably jump off the bottom step. Scientists have shown the best thing a smoker can do for their health is to stop smoking completely. But many people find it difficult to quit in one step. Smoking delivers nicotine very quickly to the brain, making it highly addictive. But most health problems are caused by other components in tobacco smoke. Using a licensed vaping product containing nicotine is an effective way of reducing the harm from tobacco. And because you can reduce the amount of nicotine delivered, it helps smokers quit for good. There are certainly um, members or, or, or groups in, in the, you know, the, the health uh, economy, if you like, that want to see the complete eradication of, of the use of nicotine. But you've also got the media who, who love a, a bad news story. Sensationalism is the game now. And, you know, even the, even the res supposedly respectable journals do this and they all have their own way of their own way of doing if it's the guardian it's an industry conspiracy if it's the telegraph or mail it's some you know kind of horrendous health effect they sell their papers they get you to click onto their websites buy a shocking headline and you know e-cigarettes help smokers to quit doesn't work whether the public can trust what they're reading on vaping really depends on what they're reading uh, some journalists and outlets do this really well some don't I think talking about media portrayals of anything is probably rather difficult at the moment. Um, we are absolutely living in a post-truth age. You can't stop the deluge of misinformation coming across the Atlantic. It gets picked up by our journalists, our news, our news outlets, people read American publications. Just can't stop it. I think that if you're getting your news free on the internet and you're expecting balanced health reporting, then I think you're always going to be disappointed. It's one of those kind of health stories where people have a, a strong opinion one way or a strong opinion the other way. Um, and I guess what, the, the, what comes over in the media is really the opinion of the person they're asking at that time. For years, the media has shared worrying stories about vaping. But what evidence are these stories based on? Public Health England disputes many of the stories and the science that prompts them. The government body wants smokers to switch to vaping products to help them quit combustible cigarettes. In late 2018, they released this film to present the dangers of smoking compared to vaping. And what we are going to do is we are going to have one bell jar set up to smoke the average number of cigarettes smoked by a smoker each month. That's over 300 cigarettes. And then we have another bell jar through which we draw vapor from an e-cigarette for the same amount of time. And then, as a control condition, we have clear air to demonstrate not smoking or vaping. And here we have the bell jar through which we had 300 cigarettes smoked. I mean, it just is so revolting. Look at this, that's just the inside of the jar. Here, a lump of tar. So that's what's going on inside your lungs. And now we're gonna cut this tube. And look at that. There's loads of it. And this is only after one month. <sighs> So is this what's happening inside our bodies when we smoke? It's certainly a good indication. 
So now let's have a look at the e-cigarette. Let's just see. A little bit of vapour, water vapour. That's the only one that's really got much in the way of colour. Just feels yes. wet. My research shows that e-cigarettes are significantly less harmful than cigarettes, as this experiment shows. Only a few months after the film was released, a photo taken by an American teen went viral as she launched a campaign to stop vaping. Seema Herman posted a photo of herself on social media from her hospital bed after waking from a medically induced coma. She had been treated for pneumonia and lung failure. Vaping hit the headlines and created a health scare as thousands of cases like Seema's emerged in America and made the world news. There's an urgent health concern tonight in the vaping crisis. Healthy Texas teenagers suddenly unable to breathe. The CDC is looking into more than 450 cases of illnesses potentially linked to vaping. But investigators looking into the links between vaping and lung damage in the US found a black market at work. There was a, a, a huge amount of interest during 2019 in uh, vaping-related lung injury, particularly in the US. So recently, we had the Avali, the lung injury cases that were in the US. And early on, and unfortunately still now, they, are being, they were attributed to e-cigarettes. It came out of the blue and it hadn't been there for long periods and then over a very short period of time it was. Several of the United States had decriminalised or actually legalised and licensed um, cannabis products. Most of those cannabis products contain THC. And of course it did um, cause lung injury because it was cut with something called vitamin E acetate. And we saw um, reporting about thousands of injuries and 60 deaths. And that was seen as a vaping story, not as a sort of tainted product story. Patients were saying, no, I, I, never, I never vaped anything like that. I was only using nicotine. It's because the insurance system in the United States wouldn't allow a claim if they said that they were using an illicit substance. That wasn't inconsequential. So we did see highly publicised, negative scare stories, vapes causing lung injury, vapes causing death. So we didn't see the same thing in the UK at all. The media storm that, that followed this um, did not distinguish the difference between cannabis containing products which had THC in them and vaping products which people were using to give up nicotine. And that conflation of the two products meant the vaping got a very, very bad press in the USA. And the US independent vape sector was pretty well destroyed by what followed. Public perception of e-cigarettes before and after actually people's perceptions of e-cigarettes did get worse. The knock-ons in the UK was that we stopped seeing new customers. It is very unfortunate. I think it will just take time uh, for people to, um, uh, you know, become a little bit more confident that actually these products are really well regulated in Britain and, you know, um, that, that what was being uh, smoked in America was something quite different. So one of the myths that we hear is that they're not regulated, that it's a wild west and actually e-cigarettes are regulated. The limit to strengths, limit to bottle size, uh, what has to be on the, um, the outside of the package, what's inside the bottle as well. The most important of the regulations in terms of protecting vapours are to make sure that e-liquids are properly produced. In this country, we've got very, very good and safe regulations. Any ingredient has been toxicologically screened for its suitability for inhalation, that the nicotine that's used in the products is suitable for human consumption, because not normal nicotine is, um, and that everything else within the e-liquid meets those kind of standards. We need to get this into public consciousness that like all products, there is an illicit market or you know a black market. There is there are lower quality products. We find this across, you know, all products. It's not something that's exclusive to e-cigarettes. Despite strict UK regulation and backing from leading health experts, vaping has struggled to improve its reputation. In 2017, tobacco giant Philip Morris International set up the foundation for a smoke-free world pledging a billion dollars to research vaping and other smoking alternatives. However, in 2019, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg launched a $160 million campaign to tackle vaping. 
In 2020, it appeared he was winning the battle when the World Health Organization warned vaping could be harmful to health, especially for teens. Are ordinary smokers the casualties of a clash between morals and money, making the truth harder to find? So this organization called um, Foundation for a Smoke-Free World, and they have been set up with, fully funded by Philip Morris International, so the makers of Marlboro. And they have a remit to do research and promote a uh, harm reduction agenda. Um, and it's been very problematic because this is uh, entirely funded by the, one of the world's biggest tobacco companies and their agenda, therefore, is, is called into question. Mike Bloomberg uh, is an American billionaire um, financial services uh, uh, you know, tycoon, and he set up a foundation called Bloomberg Philanthropies, which funds tobacco control around the world. And so far, he's spent in excess of a billion. There is a battle there, and, and sometimes it's about morals rather than health. And that worries me that, you know, if people take a moralistic stance on, on nicotine, then they are, they are denying people who actually need to stop smoking a way out of, of their, their smoking habit. We've proven in the UK that using nicotine, using other alternative forms of nicotine can have a really positive impact on reducing harm and reducing the tobacco epidemic. And there are many countries in which um, pursuing that approach would be useful. The problem with Mr. Bloomberg is that he's a vaping prohibitionist. He was in, when he had a brief run uh, for president uh, early in 2020, he went on the record to the New York Times saying he thought vaping products should be banned outright. The involvement of big tobacco companies does raise people's suspicions and rightly so. I mean, the tobacco industry has behaved uh, appallingly. Some you know, authorities will say that um, tobacco harm reduction is a good thing because it, it reduces the harm from, from smoked tobacco. Others, like the WHO, for instance, the World Health Organization, want to ban any nicotine product that isn't actually medical. The World Health Organization position is a difficult one to understand. The World Health Organization are very conservative. They think that for nations that ban vaping, that's a reasonable position, um, and they see countries like the UK that are very positive about vaping as having overstepped the mark. Now I have a problem with that, and, and many in my field do, that it's actually almost saying that if you don't quit the, the right way, if you don't quit our way, then don't bother quitting at all. I think it's a position of a long history of working in tobacco control with a tobacco industry that has been working against them at times. Um, but I think at some point they need to embrace tobacco harm reduction rather than just working on nicotine use has to be driven out completely. It doesn't. What needs to be driven out is the harm of smoking. Cigarette smoke contains over 6,000 chemicals. At least 69 of those could cause cancer. In comparison, vaping products typically contain nicotine, propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, and flavorings. These key ingredients have not been associated with any serious risk. The components of cigarette smoke that are harmful to our health are either absent in vapor or are present at tiny percentages compared to cigarette smoke. So why is there so much mistrust in vaping products and their contents? Nobody's saying e-cigarettes are totally risk-free. Of course they're not. You're inhaling some chemicals in, into your lungs. But it's about comparing the risk to smoking. And that's the distinction that really needs to be made. It's worth thinking about in terms of toxins that are in the vapour rather than the liquid. Um, there are only four that are of interest, um, the principal two of those being formaldehyde and acetaldehyde. They appear at less than, 100, uh, less than one hundredth of the level they appear in cigarette smoke. The advantage of vaping is in harm reduction from smoking. Uh, people who do not smoke at all should not start vaping, in particular teenagers. At the current time, at least in the UK, it looks like the young people that are vaping are also those young people that have smoked or potentially would have smoked. We have seen no epidemic of uh, e-cigarette use among youth in the UK. The fact is kids do risky things. Um, so the question is, how risky are these things? And, you know, 
How much effort should you put in to stop them? What is important is that we balance this risk of making the products unattractive or unavailable to young people while not making the products unattractive and unavailable to some of our most disadvantaged smokers. You've got to be careful that you don't kill the golden goose, that you put so much effort into quotes, protecting kids from vaping, that you make it impossible for adults, so you make it difficult for adults to use vaping as an alternative to smoking. Yorkshire Cancer Research spoke to 100 people across the county to find out what they thought about vaping. Only 56% agreed with the statement that vaping is safer than smoking. 89% think messages around the risks of vaping are unclear to the general public. More than two out of five people have seen or heard worrying news about vaping on topics such as popcorn lung, unknown long-term effects on lungs, being a gateway to smoking, harmful chemicals and exploding devices. Only 30% think that vaping should be promoted as a stop smoking tool. And two out of three people feel that there is not enough information on vaping for smokers to make an informed decision about quitting methods. Scientists have helped us understand the dangers of cigarettes and how vaping could reduce the harm smokers do to their bodies without having to withdraw from nicotine. But there have also been well-publicised studies that suggest vaping is harmful to health. How valid are these studies? And are they misleading people into believing vaping may be more harmful than it is? I do worry that, you know, there are um, very listen to um, policy makers, scientists, um, physicians who are very anti and, and who are doing everything they can to actually kind of you know shut down the tobacco harm reduction alternatives. For some people who are almost um, you know evangelists against e-cigarette e use uh, and will, will pick up on any health story that shows they might be harmful. The media scare stories are just that, they are just scare, they're just scare stories. They are the final link in a chain of irresponsibility that starts with the research community constantly exaggerating and spinning its findings to create sensational stories. You know, the researchers want this news coverage, gets them notoriety and it helps them to get grants. There are studies that almost seem to be designed to show harms. Sometimes there will be a, a paper, for example, where e-cigarette smoke is blown on some cells in a Petri dish. Zebrafish embryos or something like that, put them in a Petri dish, douse them with a load of nicotine liquid and, you know, strangely find that they don't do ever so well. That's extrapolated from a kind of basic science experiment to uh, a kind of health message. You shouldn't use these cigarettes because look, we've done this. They probably wouldn't do ever so well if you put chilli sauce in either, but you know, people are quite happy to use chilli sauce. In the UK we're very blessed and um, there's some really good rigorous um, research looking at um, how e-cigarettes can help people to quit smoking, different kinds of smokers. We've got in Britain anyway, we have particularly good scientists who I think understand this area well, they understand the benefits, uh, they're not paralysed by relatively minor or inconsequential risks, but they're seized by the opportunities and that's a good thing. Smoking costs the NHS millions and millions of, of pounds every year through illness and disability. Uh, if vaping helps someone to come off cigarettes uh, and eventually stop vaping in the long run as well, I think vaping is a viable option for NHS smoking cessation services. Stopping smoking historically has been a difficult thing to do because we're, we're dealing with uh, an addiction and by that very definition, sometimes they are very difficult to give, give up. It becomes this ritual and people feel this pleasure with, within their smoking. It's really difficult for people to imagine not having that, this small treat every day. It's not a tug of war. These are people who, if you take them the right offer, they will bite your hand off. Smoked 20 to 30 cigarettes a day. 
I was super fit. Went all over the world with the military, left the army on medical grounds after 20 years. And within probably two or three months, I could hardly get up the stairs. And I knew I needed to stop smoking. I found myself buying cigs over other things, folds, stuff like that. Fundamentally, you think you can, you've always got the strength to stop. The part of the reason getting into vaping was obviously mainly the kids. Even be able to run around the block with him, teach him how to ride his bike. I can do that now. With my daughter who's eight, I, I couldn't do it properly. From stopping smoking and then vaping, I could I could run up the stairs. It, it, the change was unbelievable. I wake up, I feel absolutely free. I'm, my breathing's ten times better. You know, you're affecting other people, and I think that's unfair because it's not, they should have a choice. I'm not coughing in the morning anymore. Um, I'm not out of breath. It's, the edge has gone for a cigarette because I'm, I'm, I'm using the vape. We would know in a minute if cigarettes were, in, were, were invented today that they would be extremely hazardous. People say that vaping is in its infancy, but we've, we've had it for over, over 10 years now, almost, almost 20 years really. And you know, we're, we're not seeing long-term harm from, from its use. We have got reasonably good evidence now that the, any harm that there may be from vaping is a very, very small amount compared to the harm of smoking real cigarettes. It's true that we don't know uh, the, the, what will happen in the distant, distant future, but we can take a damn good guess because we can see the low levels of toxins that there are in vapour. One big UK trial that compared the best combination of nicotine replacement therapy plus behavioural support uh, with e-cigarettes plus behavioural support, so comparing the two like for like, found that uh, e-cigarettes were about twice as effective in helping smokers to quit at about a fifth of the price. Vaping has, has offered smokers a, a, you know, a, a suitable alternative for them to consume nicotine and inhale it in a much safer way. Our hope is that people will use e-cigarettes e as an aid to quitting, but eventually quit the e-cigarettes themselves. Now, some people can't do that. Uh, you know, and if it's a choice between carrying on the e-cigarette versus going back to smoking, we would always want them on the e-cigarette. The government has uh, said that we want to make smoking obsolete. Uh, we want to get to a point within just a decade um, where people just don't smoke anymore, that smoking really is history. You have to remember that tobacco smoking is not a reasonable amount of harm. Tobacco smoking kills more than half of the people who do it for their lifetime. That's not a reasonable harm. Pretty well anything has to be better than that. So what are you going to do? You're already quite attached to your cigarettes. You're at a certain age, they've not killed you yet. Why switch? That, that, is, that is what some people tell us. Why switch? The message is very clear. Vaping is better than smoking cigarettes. A decision that an individual person makes to stop smoking almost certainly is the most important health decision they will make in their whole lives. Smoking kills 200 people in Great Britain a day. It doesn't kill, you know, vaping does not kill 200 people in the UK a day. It's not a trivial change. It's not just uh, like an additional new product. It will ultimately take over from the cigarette for those people who want to use nicotine. People have been uh, a little disappointed by the last few Public Health England uh, reviews of e-cigarettes uh, because essentially they keep repeating the same findings. Um, and it keeps being good news. So we keep on finding that uh, e-cigarettes are effective to help smokers to quit, and the evidence for that builds all the time. Most smokers want to stop, and they're, and they're looking for their door out of their addiction. And for each smoker, that door might be slightly different. And e-cigarettes provide a route out for, have, have provided a route out in this country for many thousands of people. And so it might work for you, so why not give it a go? So the time is now, really. We're missing an opportunity if we don't encourage people to give up smoking using vaping products. Just stop judging people that vape. And don't judge someone for maybe wanting to move over to vaping and who might not want to quit nicotine. Maybe we will come across people that will be vaping for 10 years. Now that might not be something that 
a practitioner wants or recommends. But if that person feels that, well, it's that or 10 years of smoking, we have to be realistic. It, it, it sort of like took away the addiction. It was like I was still doing something with my hand. Um, it, it's like smoking, but not sm I'm not worried what it's doing to me. After about a year or so of, of stopping smoking, I, I was waking up in the morning and there was no phlegm, there was no coughing. I, I felt better in myself. I didn't feel out of breath all the time. Um, I, I just felt alive sort of thing. But I stopped smoking, I've extended my life. Um, my, my dad was a smoker, my granddad was a smoker. My granddad died of emphysema. Um, my dad died of cancer, so I, I was quite young. My dad was only 61. Um, so while I was smoking, I had it in my head, I won't live past my 60s. But now I'm not smoking, I'm hoping 80s, 90s. Thank <laughs> you.